guys, here's Madame OK. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being a part of it. If you enjoy watching the videos, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe as well as to hit the like button. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye. Hello guys, here's Madame OK. Today I want to invite you to paint with me a portrait of a cat. To do it, we will be using watercolors and the brushes and pencil to sketch. So let us start. So I want to make the cat very, very easy way. So I will think about head of the cat. Ooh la la, really big. Make sure that you don't press the pencil hard. Otherwise, we have big head. We have body, we need paws of the cat. So we'll make them very simplified, like half circles. And then of course we need a tail, a big one. I like big tails, even crossing the borders of our paper. Yeah. Um, I think we need beautiful ears. So one of them will be here. Then another one on the left side will come over there. Uh, what we will need? We will need whiskers, of course, but you can mark them later on using black paint, so I'm not worried about that. The very important part for us will be the nose. So, do we want to have a big one? Eh, well, I think that will be okay size, or maybe even smaller. Then I want to make a really pretty smile. Really a happy cat. See, coming there, and those different parts whiskers and then we need pretty eyes remember that the eyes are slanted so you have to make them slightly under the angle and sharp like this then the other one since we have diagonal line we can proceed and make the slanted eye voila our slanted eyes are coming the irises oh la la that looks so good and then we will have number of whiskers Coming there, remember there will be black. Uh, what else do we want to have? Well, I think that is good. We can bring some nice pattern later on and we can use even markers for it, right? So I'm not worried about this part. And of course the paws will need some sharp, nice, voila. I think that's it. I think that should be okay. So let us start with application of the color. I'm using my brush and I use a bigger brush thinking about the color of the background. And I really like to have a color that will be a very powerful one. So blue should be okay. Notice that I use the technique called wet on dry. So that means the paper is dry and I'm just going with paint that is of course wet. Oh la la, look at this. I have two colors now because by an accident, I placed my brush in the, into the purple color. So now, since I've done it, well, I have to claim it as a happy accident and continue with the color combination. So actually, I like what's happening here because I have two different colors mingling or mixing together blending beautifully and see the most important we want to have fun working on it so I... then we start moving towards more of the purple in the mixture and then we're gonna think about the color on the ground there where our cat will be sitting what do you think color should we use we can continue with purple but i think it would be nice to change it to another color so i'm just white painting i'm thinking hmm which color would be the good one because we don't need to rush though we have to think already about it so you see a little bit of the blue in the purple will not harm it still is the purple it's a dominant color but it's just for the variety, it will look better like this. Fantastic. And then 
Let me see which color should we apply over there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. What about some brown? What do you think? Brown or maybe green? Oh, I like the idea with green. Wow. And I have two greens in my set of watercolors, so I will explore both of them. And then I place some, leave me on it, some yellow. And, I and then I will show you what will happen when I bring some of the, some of the yellow into the color. Do you see the difference? I like what is happening here. I really, really do. Especially next to the purple, because then the colors brighten each other. Make sure that you have clean brush, because otherwise your yellow will be contaminated. And who knows, maybe we want to still use yellow on the cut. I also would suggest that you start thinking about the name of our cut. I'm creating legs, and I will, for that purpose, use a little bit of brown. A little bit, and a little bit here. That's good. Wow. Now, time to work on the body. So we will think about the colors and I definitely will move to, maybe here I still can use bigger brush, but I really have to think which color will be good. And I decided that first I apply a little bit of yellow on it. And you know what yellow, because yellow is primary color. And I want to have it in some places next to the purple color that I have here. But at the same time, I will come later on with orange color. And this, the mixture of orange and yellow will give me a, a very yellowish orange color, which would be perfect ne a place next to the blue color. So you can see, oh la la, you see this is still wet and that's why the color started bleeding, I call it, into my yellow, the brownish color. And that's okay, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with it. And you know what? I think I will make the face pink and the same, I will make the paws pink. In my set of watercolors, I have two red colors. One is this, I call it raspberry color, and the other one is cadmium red. So this color is called more of the, I would say even Quanacradon red. It's a very strange name, isn't it? But I'm telling you, the colors is just fantastic. Wow! I love it. See, I put a little bit more of it. So be careful that it will not move too much onto the other color. Like a little bit, it doesn't bother me, but not too much. I let it dry a little bit so I can see. I try not to use so much water now. I think that you can go with another layer of the raspberry color on the paws. Very much. You see, it's brighter now. Notice how good this yellow looks like. The next step will be, of course, to work on the nose and the eyes. So I have to think about the eyes. Which color do I want to have? And I want to have green there. So I will use a smaller brush because I don't want to run in problem that I will cover my raspberry color. And I want to have a nice color. Oh, that's a little bit dark. You know what? I don't like it like this. Therefore, I will move right away to yellow. And first I will apply yellow and then I will bring the green back. So which color will, uh, will you place on the nose? And I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I can use black color, but I also can try with the purple. I like to experiment with different colors. I think purple would be a, uh, could be a good addition here. Now I can decide if I want to paint the eyes with the brush or do I want to wait and place the line uh, using marker. But I will, because I always like to do the things right away. See, I'm placing my pupils here. And the same what I want to do, I want to come and make those dots that indicate where my beautiful whiskers will be. Like this, like this, like this, you see? Um, fantastic. Now, I just want to make sure that the sharp nails will come. I also like to come with the outline and maybe placing beautiful outline around the ears. See, I can even go a little bit more on the eyes. See, and get this really slanted look to the eyes. Wow, 
I love this cut. Wow, such a happy, pretty cut. I like it. Maybe I just cut the head here like that. And then the whiskers. Hmm, let's see. We can place them. And I still use the purple. See the whiskers? You can go a couple of lines. See one, and then you can break it, and then bring it back. I have to make sure that my hand is clean. Right, a little bit heavier. There we have this dot. One and another one. See, see, we have lots of lots of colors. Pretty happy colors. Now, the one thing that you really want to do is the pattern. We talk about the orange color. Oh, I almost forgotten about it. I want to show you what will happen with the cut when every second part of its body will become orange. So we'll have yellow and orange color. See, that actually will look very nice. So I will bring some red now onto the tail. And I will use a different red. I will use cadmium red. So I'm looking that I don't have too much of water and I bring this color just like that underneath of my orange. I want to come at the same on the edge here. Again. So you can already at this stage decide what kind of pattern do you want to use. I like to have a little bit of the paint by the edges of yellow and orange shape somehow to the, by helping them to be divided. I will bring some yellow onto my cut, it's head. So you see like that. I don't want to have one even color, so I think that would be better. And I think we can also bring another pattern in those uh, those sections of yellow, but I will leave it for you to decide. I just want to bring some of the yellow on my cut head that you can see it more and it's a little bit more action will be going on. That's what you'll be doing with this cut. I hope that you all had lots of lots of fun working on this project. And um, if you want, later on, you can come with some markers and simply make those lines sharper. Uh, you can add pattern using markers uh, as well, or just pencil crayons. And again, when you don't have uh, watercolors, not a big deal, you will draw your beautiful cut. So I hope you enjoyed the project, and now it's time for you to work on your own cut. Have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bye.